Hi everyone, I'm Daniel at QNAP and I'm here to talk about hybrid mount. You might know it as cache mount, but we're about to change the name to hybrid mount. And what hybrid mount does is it allows you to, to map your public cloud storage onto your NAS and then use your NAS storage as a cache space for your public cloud. What that cache space does is it allows you to access your public cloud storage as at LAN speeds as long as uh, you're accessing something that's cached. It also makes it possible to access your public cloud storage through local protocols like SMB, NFS, AFP. And I'll talk more into why that is and what that enables. But first, uh, for our agenda today, I want to talk about two modes uh, with hybrid mount. One is using cache space and one is not using cache space. Um, how cache space increases performance, how cache space increases functionality, I want to do a live demo, and then I briefly want to talk about a very similar feature called VJBot Cloud. So first of all, there are two modes uh, with using uh, hybrid mount. Uh, one is using cache space, and one is not. Uh, when you use cache space, uh, at first, unless you buy more licenses, there's a limit of two. You can enable cache space for two public clouds without buying any licenses. You get two for free. And then if you want more than two, you buy licenses. But uh, when you're not using cache space, you don't have to worry about licenses. There is no limit. Map as many public clouds as you want onto your NAS. When you use cache space, you get high performance from anything that's cached. You get to anything that's cached, you get to access it at LAN speeds instead of being limited by internet speeds. And whenever anything is cached, you can access it through uh, local protocols like SMB, NFS, AFP. Also, as long as it is cached, uh, your local apps on your NAS can access what is in your public cloud as if it was local. For example, QMagi can do image recognition on the, the images in your public cloud as long as you enabled cache space. So when you enable cache space, you're using your NAS uh, like a, a, a cloud, like a storage gateway for your public cloud to increase the speed. Uh, so, for example, uh, instead of having your computer directly access public cloud, it goes through your NAS so that your NAS can be a cache for the public cloud to increase the speed of uploads or downloads to the public cloud. So the way the cache space works is as soon as you enable cache space for a public cloud, immediately it saves metadata for every single file in that public cloud. So it's not going to save every file onto the cache space, but it saves metadata for every file. And um, I'll get more into why we do that, but in this example here, there are five uh, files in the public cloud. So we have metadata for all five files, and one of the files is cached, meaning that any device in your network, if they access this file, they access it at LAN speeds. If they access the other files, they access it at internet speeds. But once you access a new file, for example, you access this file over here, that new file gets copied to the cache. And then if any other, anyone on your network wants to access that file again, they access at LAN speeds. So you might ask, well, why are we saving uh, metadata for all of the files? And the reason for this is that saving metadata for files in the cache space is a big reason why it's possible to access your public cloud storage through local protocols like SMB, NFS, AFP. It's, uh, this metadata makes that possible. The metadata has what you need to access uh, these files through local protocols. So this is for downloading from the cloud and cache makes that faster. And then this is for uploading to the cloud. Again, that's also cached. Your computer, rather than go straight, straight to the cloud through the internet, rather than be limited by internet speeds, your computer through the LAN at LAN speeds um, uploads to the NAS cache space. And then the NAS uh, in, in its own time through the internet uploads that to the cloud. So uploads are faster, downloads are faster because of the cache space. Also because of the cache space, local apps running on, on your NAS can access the public cloud storage. So QMagi can do image recognition on the images in your public cloud. Video Station can uh, play videos and movies that are on your public cloud as if it was locally on the NAS. Music Station can play music that's on your public cloud. 
So this cache space really uh, allows your public cloud to have a lot more functionality because local apps on your NAS can um, access uh, that public cloud storage. And same thing on your computer, local apps on your computer can access uh, what's ever mapped onto your computer through SMB. So let's demo this. So this is cache mount. Um, soon it will be called uh, hybrid mount, but it's still called cache mount for at least a few more days. In the overview, you can see how many licenses. So I have one free license with cache mount, but when we change it to hybrid mount, you should be getting two free licenses. Here's my cache space. I have 296 gigabytes of cache space. Minimum should be 200 gigabytes, but you can make it larger. And the larger it is, the more you can cache to uh, better increase uh, your performance. Over here, we can see uh, what has been uh, mounted onto my NAS. So here's the public clouds that's been mounted, and here's my other devices. So let's say I want to map a folder of another NAS through SMB or something. That would be a remote device. And if I wanted to add a device, I just click the plus sign. Over here, I can, uh, I can look at what I've mapped. So I've mapped my Google Drive onto my NAS, and you can see I've enabled cache space. Here I can uh, kind of see and manage my cache space. As you can see, I haven't done too much with it yet. I haven't really used it very intensely. I haven't, I haven't used it very much yet. Uh, here are my licenses. I have one free license, but with hybrid mount, you should have two free licenses. I could just click here to purchase more licenses. And here is permissions. I have allowed my administrator group to have access to whatever is mapped onto the NAS, but uh, you could also choose administrator or a specific user. So um, let, let's do this. Let me show you how easy it is to uh, map some public cloud storage onto your NAS. So you can choose remote device or cloud service. I'll choose Google Drive and uh, I'll map from here. And over here, um, I could choose to enable cache or not enable cache, but because I'm out of licenses, this won't let me enable cache unless I purchase more licenses. So now I have uh, two public clouds mapped onto my NAS. As you can see, one of them has cache enabled, one does not have cache enabled. Now let's look in File Station. So over here, you can see here's the Google Drive that has cache enabled, and here's the Google Drive that does not have cache enabled. So they appear differently in File Station. When cache is enabled, it means the local apps on your NAS can access that cloud storage. It means you can map this onto your computers through SMB. This is where I'm basic, basically using my NAS as a storage gateway. This is just a normal uh, mapping without cache space, so you, less functionality, and it appears over here. So uh, what I want to demonstrate now is how um, using cache space allows you to access uh, your public cloud storage on your computers through SMB. So right now, um, on my computer, I have my QDDupe extraction tool. This is something we made for hybrid backup sync. We can uh, deduplicate and archive our backups to make them take less space. And I have made a deduplicated archive backup to my public cloud. This is very useful because with public cloud, you often pay by the gigabyte. So if you can uh, archive, compress, deduplicate your backup, you can save a lot of money. Also, the backup happens faster. But the challenge to this is that if you want to restore from your backup, you have to extract your backup. And my backup's on the cloud, but my extraction tool is on my computer. And this would normally create some challenges. However, because I can map the public cloud storage onto my computer, I can use my QDDupe extraction tool on my computer to extract my backup. So here's my backup, I can choose what version I want to restore. I can choose what I want to extract. 
simple. So uh, when we originally came up with the new hybrid backup sync and the extraction tool, we had had a, had a, a demo on um, how, how you can make a VM on your public cloud. And then from the VM on your public cloud, run the extraction tool so that you can extract uh, what is on your public cloud. But that just took extra steps that may, meant having a virtual machine. It was just more complicated. And so I, I like how a cache mount, soon to be called hybrid mount, just makes this easier. Rather than worry about having to have some VM for the extraction tool, just run the extraction tool on your computer, just map the cloud storage onto your computer through SMB, and then uh, your extraction tool can access that public cloud storage as if it was local, your extraction tool can extract your backup. So um, I wanna very briefly talk about a very similar feature called VJBOD Cloud. Uh, like Hybrid Cloud, VJBOD Cloud allows you to map public cloud storage onto your NAS. Like Hybrid Cloud, VJBOD Cloud uses your NAS as a cache space. And in a similar way, the cache space allows you to access your public cloud storage through a local protocol. However, uh, with VJBOD Cloud, instead of enabling the local protocol of SMB, NFS, AFP, VJBOD Cloud enables the local protocol of iSCSI. Otherwise, it's a very similar feature, very similar concept. Public cloud storage mapped onto your NAS, cache space, allows you to enjoy LAN speeds from whatever is cache, and it allows you to enable public, uh, sorry, local protocols. And so very similar to hybrid uh, cloud, but it's for iSCSI. So with either feature, uh, um, hybrid cloud or VJ by cloud, it's about um, having a cache, it's about your NAS being a storage gateway, it's about having a cache space for public cloud on your NAS. The cache space allows you to access your public cloud storage as if it was local. It allows you to enjoy LAN speeds from what is cached. So it's a way to get more out of your public cloud. So hybrid cloud or BJ by cloud combines public cloud and private cloud to give you uh, the best of both. So uh, I hope you find these features helpful. I want to say thank you for watching. Um, this concludes the webinar, but I'll be here for a little bit to answer questions.